WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. All right, seven minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Our next guest has been a guest of ours before. It's been a while since we spoke to Phil Proctor, but he's on the phone right now. And if I read all of his credentials, uh, he wouldn't have a, a, a second to talk to us. So yeah. I don't want to do all that. Yeah. But trust me, he's been around. Uh, my, my favorite credential of his is he's the guy who says yippee ki and and doesn't say the MF word. <laughs> <laughs> I think he says Mr. Falcon. Mr. Falcon, in, yes. In, in, he does he does the voiceovers for uh, Bruce Willis and the Die Hard movies. And so because there's curse words in there, and you can't say them on. Well, you can't say them here either. Uh, <laughs> but 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 he uh, for the movies. But it's just way beyond that. Uh, he's got a new book. It's called Where's My Fortune Cookie? My psychic surrealistic story with a P at the beginning of each beginning of each yes. of those words. Uh, he's an award winning Emmy winning actor, singer, writer, producer. You said he's got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Phil, I'm jealous. Good morning, Phil. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine, you know. I, I just woke uh, up, W-O-C-A, uh, here in woke Los Angeles. Up. I just woke up. <laughs> so, But it's nice to be talking to you sparkly, fun guys. So, uh, yes, I, I do have a lot of uh, funny credentials uh, after almost 60 years in show business. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, almost more than, uh, than, Are- than Aretha. Rest your soul, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah, and that star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame has not yet been pickaxed by anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. It, it's actually uh, for the Rugrats, okay? Because I'm a member of the Rugrats. And, and the exciting news is that they have just uh, ordered 26 new episodes of the Rugrats for Nickelodeon. Who are you in the Rugrats? I'm Howard, the father of Phil and Lil. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my God. H- Howard. Oh my gosh. We have Howard. Yeah. We have Howard from Rugrats. This is great. Uh, you know, I, you, you, the interview you're doing with us follows the interview we just did with the lady in town who's a face painter. And I always see her with children. So I thought I would use the Rugrats theme for her. Isn't that a coincidence? Oh. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That that, that loves me. Mothers be Mothers be wrote that theme. Now when we, we were first when we were first recording the Rugrats uh, at the Klasky Shupo Studios on Highland, uh, Mark Mothersby, who uh, wrote the theme and, and did all the incidental music, was in a little room right next door to the little room we were recording in. Okay? So it was really like a mom and pop store, you know? Oh, wow. and, and then and then the, the Rugrats went on to be such a great success over its 14-year run. Now you have a real studio. Right. With a little gap, yeah, that, that Klasky Shupo bought bought a building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had we had room to dance then. But anyway, we're very excited at the prospect of it coming back. And the other uh, interesting news which Robin asked me about, Robin said, well, how was your trip? And I, I was scheduled to go on a trip with my wife, Melinda Peterson, over to Scotland uh, uh, to, to take the old whiskey trail <laughs> and walk around there. <laughs> and, and, and then go to the... Uh, the, the best uh, hiccup uh, I ever had. Yeah, the Edinburgh Festival. And we had to cancel because the day before our flight, I had a heart attack. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And I've just I've, I've just recovered from it and the effects of it. A tach- tachycardia. Wow. And, uh, how long a ago? Rapid how, heart rate. How long ago was that? Uh, let's see. J- uh, July 23rd, that happened. Oh, my and gosh. It just, yeah. it just happened. Yeah. And they implanted a, um, a defibrillator in my chest. I'm sure the older members of your of your listener uh, listening uh, audience will will identify with all of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They implanted that the day before my 78th birthday on July 28th. Wow. Okay? So this is the this is the miracle of modern medicine and the age that we live in. All right, can I can I f- flash some more credentials in front of our audience? Sure. Be- because you are 
a member of the Beatles of comedy. I always called the Firesign Theater the Beatles of comedy. Yep. Yeah. And I just wanted to flash that in front of him because anybody, thanks, anybody thanks. who remembers Fire, Fireshine Theater just just is more impressed than saying Howard from Rugrats. I, <laughs> I know. It, it's an odd thing. It'll either be, oh, my God, you're Phil Proctor of the Fireshine Theater or the Fireside what? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I get. Yeah, and good. we're fire signs, but we discovered that we were all fire signs. I'm a Leo, two Aries, <laughs> Sagittarian, two no, two Sagittarians and an Aries. Oh, that's and, too funny. And recently, the people who called us the Beatles of Comedy uh, the, was were, was the, the Library of Congress when they inducted one of our records, "Don't Crush That Dwarf, Hand Me the Pliers," into their historical <laughs> recordings. Pardon me, historical recordings. Ah. And and recently. And you'll hear this announcement in uh, September. Uh, they uh, purchased the Fireside Theater archives for half a million dollars. Wow! Wow! Did any wow. of it make it to you? You better keep. You better keep that <laughs> defibrillator going. <laughs> exactly. That's a good reason to stay alive. You know. So, so, so we're, we're we're very honored by that. That's really a wonderful. Uh, you know, acknowledgement of, of the uh, effect of the Fireside Theater. And if somebody doesn't know it, you can Google us and, you know, and, and get turned on all over again because we're, we're a surrealistic futurists. And therefore, a lot of the stuff that, that we wrote in our albums, three of which were uh, nominated for, uh, for Grammys, uh, is, is still pertinent today, you know, which is amazing and, and really kind of uh, uh, funny in the best sense which, of that word. Phil, so which role did you play in the audiobook Fire, um, Fire, uh, uh, Battlefield Earth? Battlefield Earth, I played some Scottish characters in that. Oh, uh, yes. So I, and I also played uh, a, an alien uh, banker. Okay, who was using the power of his of his uh, uh, universal uh, bank holdings to uh, to save the world, basically. Yes, so, I, I recognize the voices now. I listened to that whole thing. It took me probably half a year to listen. Yeah, I know it's, it's a fun ride, and it it does take some dedication, but it's very rewarding. And and uh, there's really never been anything. Uh, recorded like it it's totally unique it is it, it is it has got to be the greatest audio book that ever has been made it is absolutely one of the best uh battlefield earth if you wonder what i'm talking about so let me let me flash another credential you sure. are seahorse bob in finding nemo that's right you're a clownfish say something funny <laughs> <laughs> And of course, the most fun was being the drunken French monkey in the Dr. Doolittle movies. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. That was a lot of fun. We did five of those, uh, you know, because they were uh, the last ones were released on video. Uh, and, oh, my gosh, I've just had such a fun career doing voices, and, uh, and, you know, over a long period of time, uh, which I never kind of, well, I guess I did kind of think that I would end up doing something like that because I was attracted to radio. My favorite uh, radio personalities were Bob and Ray, okay, when I grew up. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. You know, and th that wacky kind of off the uh, uh, satirical comedy about uh, the Society of America and and media, you know, radio and television that they parodied, and the fact that they did all their voices, just these two guys doing all these crazy voices and created these crazy characters, you know, that was very inspiring to me, uh, and 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 that's one of the reasons I think I decided at some point in my career that I was going to do Firesign Theater, and you know, I put put aside the fact that I was guest starring on All in the Family and doing movies with Orson Welles, Tuesday Weld, and Jack Nicholson in a film called The Safe Place by Henry Jaglum. And I, I dedicated my time and my energy and my spirit to the Fireside Theater uh, 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 ethos. And I'm, I'm happy that I did it, even though it's... Oh, my safe. gosh. It's a place in history. How come... I have a question for you, Phil. Now, I, sure. I, how come the king of voiceovers has a new book, but it's not available as an audible, audible book? You, ah, you, your voice is on so because, many audiobooks. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's because it's available as a podcast. Oh, it is? Yes, at podbean.com. Podbean.com. Podbean. Really? Okay. Yeah, and if you subscribe every Friday, you'll hear a new episode. And I'm also uh, adding little extras, little Planet uh, Proctor extras to the, uh, to the broadcast. I'll probably be talking about my... Uh, brush with my most recent brush with death, 
<laughs> yeah. one point, right? yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable well, how jovial you are about that gosh. birth of death, too. Oh, wouldn't you be jovial if you, if you survived? I guess you know? that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the heart is a, a, a tricky thing because it's an electrical instrument as well as being, you know, you know muscle. And what basically happened to me, and has happened to many other citizens of the country uh, as, as we get older, is an incre- a, a rapid heartbeat where basically the, the heart is misfiring and sending signals to uh, itself, to the ventricle, that you have to speed up. And, of course, you don't, you know. <laughs> At this point in life, we want to slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the defibrillator, which I've unfortunately experienced, is uh, jolts you back to uh, a normal heartbeat. You know, in every uh, emergency room movie you see, they take out those those two uh, plate, with plates. Right. Shock people's life. Well, <laughs> right, right. that's basically built into me. I've got a, a little, a little uh, uh, paramedic in my chest. And it, it will shock me back to a normal rhythm. Can you feel it when it does it? Oh, man, can you feel it? <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's terrible. It's like being kicked in the chest by a horse. You know? Really? But at the same time, yeah, it's, it's really awful. But at the same time, you're going, well, I can feel it. You know, <laughs> Some, Something must be right about this. Uh, and, and hopefully I'm on a, a new regime now. Uh, that my cardiologist just put me on of pills that should regulate my heartbeat enough that I shouldn't have to have this this event happen again. Uh, and he basically said, uh, "We'll be seeing you again in ten years when we have to replace the battery." Well, that's said, good. That's good. Yeah, that is 10 good. Years. Sure, I'll keep going and going and going. <laughs> uh, you have a lot of different uh, uh, titles, uh, uh, segments that you talk about. The one that one of the ones is forward into the past. Uh, yes, yeah, that was a, a collection of parodies of old time radio that we released as a forty five. Now that's not a gun. <laughs> those, those people have never heard of it. It was a small record with a big hole in the middle that, that <laughs> right that uh, that right. Uh, would, would that would, would release what was known as a sing a signal. Uh, pardon me, a single, uh, and that's where a lot of the popular music on radio came from in the old days. Okay, I was a, I was a big consumer of those little plastic circles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but. Uh, sure. But you had said that you saw Jeremy Clyde of Chad and Jeremy perform with Peter Asher. That's right. And actually, Jeremy, uh, who was an old roommate of mine in L.A. uh, back in the 60s, uh, he's coming to stay with us again in a few days because he's now playing with James Taylor's daughter. Uh Okay, so it's it's, uh, Taylor and Jeremy, Taylor and Clyde or something like that. Wow. at, at McCabe's on Saturday. We're going to see him. And, of course, she is the uh, progeny of James Taylor and Carly Simon. All right? And Carly Simon, which is in the book, Where's My Fortune Cookie, available at Amazon.com. Uh, in the book, I tell the story of how this little girl came up to Wind Gap, Pennsylvania, where I was performing in summer stock, with her sister uh, in Kiss Me Kate, and sat on the uh, porch of the old hotel that we were staying at, playing the, the uh, guitar and singing her songs. And it was the young Carly Simon. Wow. wow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that is so impressive. I, I, I spoke to Carly Simon one time. I, I stood next to her at the Nassau Coliseum in New York. Uh, James Taylor was doing a concert. And I did. I just looked over and I said, "Oh my gosh, you're Carly Simon." And I, I said, "Are you going? Are you going to sing?" And she said, "No, I don't think so." And that was it. I didn't. I I, oh. I always regret not having a more of a conversation. <laughs> I was I was like starstruck. I was like, "Oh my gosh, you can't!" Oh my gosh, it's you. And yeah, then, but you, do you remember she was she was uh, uh, she had stage fright, kind of. That's what. Know? Yeah, I remember reading that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Do you I, ever get stage fright with, with the things you do? No, I've never had. Well. Uh, I studied self hypnosis when I was a kid. I taught I taught myself self hypnosis, which is I guess, <laughs> and uh, and I was doing you know I was I was a gifted child and I was offered uh, wonderful roles to play all the time uh, when I was very young. And I was in high school and I was doing a play called uh, The Silver Whistle, playing the lead Oliver Ir- Irwinter or something like that. And uh, I thought to myself, well, you know, I'm going to try to do a show without any nerves at all. 
because uh, if I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, I don't want to be frightened every time I go on stage because I enjoy it so much. So I, I did a, a self-hypnosis on myself and eliminated any kind of pre-performance uh, jitters. And I went on and did the show and it was, of course, fine. And so I said, okay, I got it. And really, since then, the only time I get nervous is when I'm unprepared. Oh, oh, oh my okay. gosh, I get there that you too. Go. By, by the way, Carl, yeah, we all do. We all do. Carly Simon's uh, stage fright actually helped me. Let me explain. When okay. I when I read that she got so nervous that she would vomit or almost vomit, I because at that time I was doing college work, I was playing colleges, and I would always get stage fright. And so when I read her account, I thought, okay, well maybe it's supposed to happen, and somehow uh, by accepting it as part of the package, I was okay with it because everybody knows it goes away two or three minutes into it anyway. That's true. Yeah, once you get up there and you start doing your thing, uh, and you feel confident about it and the audience is with you or not with you but you're you're at least doing your your uh, your presentation yeah, it does go away because you're doing what you you set out to do but the anticipation uh, you should not be fearful it should be joyful yeah you yeah yeah be happy like an athlete you should be primed and ready <laughs> to go and show your stuff you know and if you if you feel confident about that then you you know you can i think perform better you can bring more out because you're relaxed, all right? I also studied with Uta Hagen, which I think is in the book, Where's My Fortune Cookie? And, uh, uh, and she taught us uh, techniques to be relaxed on stage, to feel comfortable on stage in that basically um, un unreal environment. She taught us how to feel as though it w to make it a reality that we were comfortable in. And therefore, uh, we could perform more easily because our emotions would be elicited by the reality that we had created for ourselves. If you kind of catch my drift. Yeah. <laughs> hey, tell me, tell me a little bit about your co-author, Brad Schreiber. Well, Brad is an amazing character. And really, if it weren't for Brad, I wouldn't have written the book because uh, he uh, has, has done several uh, autobiographies and memoirs of famous people. And, uh, and he also has written some uh, award-winning books on his own. Uh, one of them about, Patty Hearst and the SLA, another one about Jimi Hendrix, which may at some point become uh, a, a Broadway musical. Wow. And, and he also has taught comedy and written about comedy. Okay. The, the book that, that's about uh, Patty Hearst is called Revolution's End, and it's gotten just wonderful re reviews and awards and things. Uh, and so, so he's like me, he's a, a serious, funny person. Okay. And, and so what he said was, he took me out to breakfast, and he uh, pitched his participation, and, he, and, I, and, and I said, well, you know, I've been trying to write this book for years, but my, I'm too busy. My life is, is still too filled with work and uh, love and adventure, uh, thanks to my dear wife, Melinda, and uh, I can't really, you know, do it. He said, well, here's what I'll do. I'll come and sit with you with a tape recorder. You, you, you can tell the stories. I'll do a first draft. And then we'll work on a second draft together. Mm. And that's how the book was born. Oh, and wow. even so, even so, there are a few omissions. There are people in my life, like Paul Gorman, who uh, it is his birthday today. Now, does that name Paul Gorman mean anything to you? Oh, my gosh. I, I can't say it does. Okay, I don't know. WBAI in New York. He used to. Oh, WBAI, yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he did a show called Lunch Pail. Okay. Well, I used to call up and pretend to be various characters. Oh my gosh! I used to, I was a big fan. BAI for the. Can I describe BAI? It was. Yeah, sure. it, it was. It was like no other radio station. It was the station you tuned to when you wanted to hear something off. I, I think wasn't there a guy named Howard Smith who did a show there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and I used to listen to Howard, not Howard K. Smith, but Howard Smith. Howard Smith. Yeah. 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 And, but he and Paul became famous. Because he played George Carlin's Seven Words You Can't Say on television on the air. Oh, which, no. And, wow. Yeah, which led to the Supreme Court decision about free speech. Oh, okay. my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, we, we have been pals forever. We went to Yale together. We were in a secret society together. Shh, don't tell anybody. No, we and won't. Then, <laughs> and, I, and I just had a, a nice long conversation with him yesterday uh, to celebrate his, his birthday. Today I called him just after midnight, 
so he was already as old as I am. Now. Wow. That, I, oh, wow. my gosh. It's so good to talk to you. I, I, I just love the history that you share with us and the amazing things you've been able to be a part of. It's, it's just so cool, Phil. Um, well, I- so are you looking forward to, uh, to uh, in addition to the Rugrats, is there something coming up that you can share with us? Uh, that's the most exciting thing, really, at this point, because, you know, let's face it, I am 78 years old, <laughs> you know, and, and I've, I've had a comfortable, fulfilling life, uh, and I'm still continuing to do so. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not pursuing a lot of activities. You know, I just read for something yesterday, which uh, I'm perfect for because uh, I, I speak French and uh, you, I, you have to speak French in this thing. And uh, uh, if I get that, it'll be something else I can tell you about because it's a big deal. But basically, you know, our business, uh, no matter how successful we are, is a question of, of what is offered to us and what we choose to do and what other people decide we should be doing mm-hmm. okay so it's, it's, it's always an element and this is why you read about stars being insecure you know about oh the, the, the last movie didn't make as much money as the ones before so maybe my career is over ah, right, so, right right mm-hmm. and, and people, even like steve martin in his book uh, w- would write about the fact that he felt like he was conning everybody and then eventually they'd figure out that he really wasn't that talented. <laughs> and he, oh my gosh. Yeah, oh my right? God. You know, now I don't have any of those insecurities. Mm-hmm. I just go ahead and, you know, if I get a job, boy, that's great because it's fun to do and it brings in some fresh lucre, you know, filthy lucre. But, but <laughs> filthy <laughs> lucre. I'm, I learned two new words today. <laughs> but you, what yeah. you have, what you are, are, are such a loving family man too. I mean, gosh, you even said happy seventh birthday to your talented granddaughter. Oh, that's right. And my my talented granddaughter uh, Audrey, named after my mom. Uh, she she and the family, uh, Kristen, my my daughter, who is married to the eldest son of the ex premier of British Columbia, Gordon Campbell. Wow. Okay. So he's like a, a Canadian prince, and my daughter uh, <laughs> my, is the uh, progeny of my Norwegian wife, my second wife, Barbro. So they're presently over in Oslo with, uh, with grandma and, uh, and, and, and my son, pardon me, my grandson, Bowen, and my granddaughter, uh, Audrey, uh, are learning, you know, getting uh, the feel of another culture. They've had a wonderful time over there. And they live about five minutes away from me in a, a sweet little house with a swimming pool. So I do Aww. get, I mean, I've, I've been really blessed that I get to spend time with them and, you know, and, and my daughter and my son-in-law. And it's really, it's, it's beautiful. So the point that I'm, I'm saying is, and I've made enough money in my career and invested it properly that, you know, I'm fine. I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I really don't miss working all the time. Uh, although you were talking about the golden age of Pulp Fiction people uh, who did uh, uh, who did Battlefield no pardon me Battlefield Earth right. is connected with uh, the uh, Galaxy uh, Elmer Hubbard uh, story short story right 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 uh, which is how I became involved in uh, adding voices to like oh hundreds of wonderful yeah books, right that he did uh, in the golden age of Pulp Fiction and that. Again, that was typical when we did it. Uh, how many years ago now? I think we're celebrating its tenth tenth year. Is that right? Wow! Since its release, but you know, I would go into the studio every week and and do an, uh, another dialect, another character, uh, you know, uh, a narration or whatever, and it was steady, wonderful voiceover work, and and I love that. I love doing that. I also added voices, as you've noted, to many. Uh, major animated films from Disney and Pixar, but I also added voices to uh, uh, the regular movies like Die Hard, what have you, and to television shows. All background voices. It's amazing. Okay? Your, your your credentials are amazing, Phil. You know, Robert and I feel like f- your friends. We feel like we know you because you're so personable, and and because we've spoken <laughs> to you more than once. Uh, and same thing with uh, with John Goodwin. One, and whenever we speak to somebody and we're in their city, we try to look them up. But we haven't gone to L.A. yet. We've we've gone. We've met some of our guests in New York, but not in L.A. So if we're ever out there, we'll have to knock on your door and and uh, and, and do take something. Take you to lunch. Yeah, take you to absolutely, something. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Well, I live up in Benedict Canyon, which is a very nice kind of rural environment. 
uh, away from the hustle and bustle of the city, but close enough to everything. And, uh, uh, and it's a nice retreat, you know, uh, a fun place to be. And I, I welcome meeting uh, the, the folks that I've gotten to talk to. Absolutely. On the that would be so, so fun. That was wonderful. Uh, yeah. So the, the, let's leave the listeners with a website. I got three of them here. Planetproctor.com. That's right. That's my blog, which has been going on for, I guess, a quarter of a century. And it's profusely illustrated <laughs> you know, right? by my friend uh, Chris Gross. Nice. And very entertaining. So planetproctor.com. And you can subscribe for free if you want to get it on a monthly basis. All right. And the next one is what? Firesigntheater.com? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Firesigntheater.com. Yep. Yeah. And there, again, David Osman and I are the only surviving members of the Firesign Theater, the four man Firesign Theater right wow. now. Wow. David is also very prolific and has been writing books about the history of the Firesign and other funny, funny books like the Ronald Reagan murder mystery. And <laughs> I've also written a couple of other books about Procter and Bergman and the touring years. And the fact that we wrote a, mo- a movie called Amer- America Thon, which has become a cult favorite because it's all about ha- saving bankrupt America. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Our Don Ritter and all kinds of wonderful people when it first came out. And then, uh, I wrote another book. Uh, what is it called? Anyway, those all these things are available. Yeah, uh, at at uh, firesigntheater.com, uh, at Bear Manor uh, Media, and then the last one. What's the last one? I have goldenagetheater.com. Ah, yes, Golden Age Theater, which will open to you to an incredible world of fantasy and adventure uh, that is really unparalleled in its its scope and fun. Because what the what they did. Uh, the, the, the folks who produce these wonderful uh, audiobooks is that they created uh, original sound effects and background um, uh, voices and original music so that it's a movie for the mind nice. when you hear it. And every word that you hear in the stories is in the books that come along with this. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it helps teach kids how to read. Phil, I'm so glad that you're, you're doing well. I mean, you sound wonderful. Yeah. So just keep it up. Do whatever you're doing and, and follow <laughs> doctor's orders, I guess. Uh, Phil, yeah, right. Phil Good Pro- advice for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Proctor, thank you so much. Thank you. Hopefully Always we get to see you. you I right. hope so, too. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Howdy folks, RL here for Dairy Queen again to tell you about what's hot and what's not. Dairy Queen has some of the best char-grilled chicken breasts on earth, as well as their chicken breast salad. And the burgers are exceptional, cooked on a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequal to personally. Banana split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. Career Source Citrus Levy Merriam brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. 